In this video, we'll be finishing up our mask by moving and placing the last couple of components and creating the other protrusions coming off the side and top of our mask. After that, we'll then mirror all the components and the eyes so we have a perfectly symmetrical mask. Okay, let's just start off placing our mouth that we made in the last section. I'll click on it to select it and then use the move tool in the context window that pops up at the bottom of our screen. Once I have it about in the center, I'll pull it up so it sticks out of our mask. Alright, let me just tweak this mouth into place using the move tool some more. Once that's good, I'll bring over the earpiece and I'll put that into place. I'll have to move it down further so that way it actually meshes with the head and not with the front of the face. I'll do that using the move tool. I'll select the ear again and then increase its scale by 25% by typing in 1.25 and then pushing enter on the keyboard. Next, I'll get rid of this unnecessary eye up here because I'm going to end up just duplicating the one that we currently have using the mirror tool. Alright, so now let's draw those protrusions that stick out of this head. I'll be using the polyline tool and the spline tool a lot to do this. For this top one, I'll use the polyline tool because it's mostly angular and flat sides. For these side curved kind of horn-like protrusions, I'll use the spline tool. The spline tool works by creating anchors every time you click, and then 1, 2, 3 d Design tries to connect the anchors together with curved lines. Notice to make a pointed horn-like shape, we'll have to create two different splines so we don't have a curved edge. Remember, to continue editing a sketch, you have to highlight it and then click on it when you're beginning the next sketch line. So I'll highlight it, click on it, and then begin the next line. The spline tool is also very handy because we can go back and edit the anchor points and change the curvature of our line to match that of our diagram. I'll just go ahead and finish with the horn protrusions. Alrighty, now it's time to turn these 2D sketches into 3D solids by using the Extrude tool from the Create tab. With the Extrude tool selected, I'll select each one of our profiles, and then we can make it three-dimensional by dragging this arrow. Notice I want to make sure that it's selected on New Solid, so that way it keeps them separate from the rest of the mask. I'll push enter to create the solids. Now I'll just go ahead and turn off the sketches with my visibility tab, so that way I can see what I'm doing. To mirror these features, we select the mirror tool from the pattern tab, and then select the solids we wish to mirror by clicking on them. Make sure not to select just the face of one of the solids. I find it easiest to click on one of the edges of a solid to select the whole thing. Then we need to click on the mirror plane selector. Now we click on this flat surface here as our mirror plane. This will mirror everything across it. I'll push enter to accept the mirror, and there we go. In the next section, we'll be making a couple of final changes to the mask and then texturing it to finalize it. 